everyone. My name is Sarah Godfrey, and I am a third year medicine resident at Columbia, soon to be cardiology fellow. And tonight, I'm going to be talking with you about what to do when you get your in service exam back. Um, so, depending on your residency program, you could take the exam every year, or some programs only have you take it your second or third year to get a sense of how you'll do on your medicine boards. So regardless of when you're taking it, the first thing to do is to not stress. It doesn't count for anything. It's just a way to help you decide how to study for your medicine boards once you finish, red, finish residency. So most of you should have gotten your scores back in October or November. And depending on what year you are in residency will determine really how you should approach it. So if you are an intern, don't worry, you have tons of time to learn everything you need to know for the medicine boards. Really what you need to learn in turn year is how to be an intern and just get a sense if you might be a little bit further behind than others. So if you are looking at your score report, there are a couple of things that you should look at. There's the overall percentage that you got correct. Then there's your percentile compared to other people who are your year in residency. So if you are an intern and you are above the 75th percentile, congratulations, you're amazing. You have great clinical knowledge, you're above where you need to be. And so whatever it is that you're doing is really working for you. Um, you can then look at the score report and it breaks it down by the different topics. Things like neurology, uh, cardiology, geriatric care. And then you can focus your studying based on some of your weaker areas. If you're someone who's in the 25th to 75th percentile, also congratulations. You are right on track with everyone else. You're in the middle 50% of interns across the country. And so you should feel really good about where you are. You might want to take a little bit more of a dedicated study approach. So at the end of the score report, you're gonna have a list of educational objectives that you got wrong on the test. For example, an educational objective could be how to diagnose restrictive pericarditis. And I'll give you a list by topic, all of the cardiology objectives you got wrong, et cetera, going down. And then you can use those to learn about new topics that you didn't get right on the test. So over the course of the next six months, you know, maybe once a week, you're gonna read about a new topic that you didn't know about. And by the end of your intern year, you will have covered a wide range of material. So in terms of where to look for that material, you can you know, use up to date, but MixApp is a great resource. You can either try to do some questions that are similar to those educational objectives, or you can actually read the MixApp book, which has great sections for each of these uh, topics that you're looking for. Now, if you're an intern and you are below the 25th percentile, um, it's totally okay. You have tons of time to catch up. But it does mean that you probably need a little bit more of an in-depth review. So you may want to reach out to your program director or whatever resources you have at your residency program to see if they have some tutoring or some additional support for people who are a little bit behind. And for people who are below the 25th percentile, I'd also recommend that you look into additional resources, whether that's reading the MixApp books, um, getting some other review books, which we'll talk about a little bit more as we go on. Um, and if you're in this group, this is a great opportunity to reach out to us at Med School Tutors. Um, I work with a lot of interns on their in-service exam. We also have a wide range of other tutors who work with people on advanced boards. Now, that's for interns. If you are a second year, it's time to start figuring out where your strengths are and where are some areas that you might need to put in a little bit more effort. Um, if you are above the 25th percentile, again, you are on track, you're doing great. But it's probably time to start doing some mix-up questions. Um, as you go through your year, you may want to line up your mix-up questions with the rotations you're on. So if you're on a cardiology month, try to make a schedule so that you'll get through all of the cardiology mix-up questions. And any of the areas that you're getting wrong, then you can go and read about that topic in the mix-up book. Again, if you're someone below the 25th percentile, you may want to reach out for additional resources, and that would probably be an opportunity to go out and buy dedicated review books to go through some of the content in more depth. 
So mix up the Mayo Clinic board review, Johns Hopkins has a board review, even First Aid has one for the medicine boards. All of them have their pros and cons uh, that we can talk about another time, um, or if you reach out to us at Med School Tutors. Now, if you are a third year, this is when it's really time to hunker down and start studying for the test. If you are someone who has excelled on every test you've ever taken, and you do well in the in-service exam, then you probably can wait to study until you get into the spring of your PGY-3. Um, if you're someone who has struggled with standardized tests or the in-service didn't go exactly as you had hoped, then really you should plan to study for the entirety of your PGY-3 year. Again, you're gonna try and get through all those mix-up questions at least twice during your PGY-3 year. Um, and for those with lower scores, you may want to get an additional question bank to give you a little bit more practice and a little bit more um, opportunities to practice your content. Um, because there's only about 1,200 BICSAP questions total, and you'll start to remember them after a while. Um, UWorld has a really great um, internal medicine boards QBank. So does the New England Journal of Medicine has a new set of questions that's excellent. Um, for those who want a little bit more direction in how to study, um, there are online and, it, well, there were in-person review courses. These days, most things are online, but different residency programs across the country go through over the course of four to six weeks, all of the content for the test. Um, or if you want more individualized tutoring, that would also be an opportunity to reach out to us at Med School Tutors. So that's kind of an overview based on what year you are in residency about how to approach your in-service exam. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to send them along to me now and I can try to answer them or reach out to med school tutors um, in the future and we can go through any questions you might have. You might meet me or any of my lovely uh, colleagues at our company. Hope you guys all have a great evening and good luck. Um, as you go forward with your studying.